Hi friends! Welcome! My name is Mr. Madsen and I'm the school counselor at Vern Duncan Elementary School and I'm going to be sharing some lessons with you today. The lessons that I'm going to be sharing are a series of lessons from our second step curriculum and they're called the Child Protection Unit or CPU for short. The focus of these lessons is on safety. How to be safe. First, just a couple of expectations. So I want you to try during this lesson to be an active listener. Try to find a place that you can listen without distraction, if possible. I know in these times it's really difficult to find a place, especially when we have to share our workspace or our living space with others in our family or um, co-workers. And so I'm, I'm hoping that you can try to find a place that will be distraction-free so you'll better be able to listen. Also, I want you to participate, okay? Just like if we were in class. I'm gonna ask questions throughout this presentation, and I want you to think about the answers that you might have, and possibly even answer out loud. And if there's an adult or an older sibling that can watch this lesson with you, that would be awesome, because they could help answer any questions that might come up during the lesson. All right, first question. Who is it that keeps you safe? Think about that for a moment. Who keeps you safe? If you were thinking the adults in your life, like your parents, your grandparents, maybe an older brother or sister, or your teacher, or a neighbor, yeah, all of those people are here to help keep you safe by watching after you and helping to teach you the rules about safety. You're absolutely right. The ways to stay safe. So this might be a familiar poster. It's called the ways to stay safe, or I like to call it the three R's. And I call it the three R's because each of the sections begins with a word that has the first letter as an R. The first is recognize. Is it safe? What's the rule? The second is report. Think about when we talked about Kelso and we talked about small and big problems. Small problems, you're smart enough and you're strong enough to solve on your own. But big problems, they're scary. They're dangerous. We need to get help from other adults. That's what reporting is. And the last R, refuse. And this basically means to use words that mean no. It's important that we don't use an a angry voice when we say no or a yelling voice when we say no. We want to use a strong, respectful, but assertive voice. A voice that says, when I mean no, I mean no. And, I don't, and I'm not mad, I just mean no. Okay, let's look at that first R, recognize. Notice that she's pointing to her brain, okay? And she's asking herself, is it safe? What's the rule? You might be thinking, what are the rules to safety? Well, I have another poster. Do you remember? Yes, the never, never rules? Yeah, there are eight never, nevers. And here's the poster. We're going to dig in and look at each one specifically. But these are rules that are designed to help us remember what, what it means to be safe. So the first eight never never rule is, yeah, never touch guns. We never touch a gun. If you find a gun, you need to leave it where it is and go get help right away. We treat guns as if they're always loaded. Even if someone tells us, oh, it's okay, it's not loaded, don't trust them or believe them, okay? Guns are dangerous, and it's when people forget about that and they think, oh, it's safe because it's unloaded, that's when an accident happens. You always treat a gun as if it's loaded, and you don't touch guns. The second is, yeah, never play with fire. Do you remember the wildfire season we had last fall in September? Yeah, fire can be really danger dangerous. And 
it can get out of control quickly. That's why we never, never play with fire. The third is, yep, you got it, never ride on wheels without wearing a helmet. You might be thinking, hey, she's riding a scooter. I ride a scooter too. Did you notice that she has elbow pads on too? There are some wheels where we not only wear a helmet, but we might wear elbow pads and knee pads. I'm thinking of skateboarding or rollerblading or roller skates. But if you ride a bike, you just need a helmet. And it's important to wear a helmet because it, it protects an important part of our body, which is our brain. The fourth is never go in water without an older person watching. Now some of you have taken swimming lessons and you're really good swimmers, but you know that even at, at every public pool, there's an adult or a person that's in charge called the lifeguard. And they're there to make sure everyone is safe and that if an emergency happens, they're there to help. Okay. Some of you might go to, to private pools, pools that are owned by your friends. And it's still, it's important to have a, an older person watching because playing in the water can be fun, but it can be dangerous also. The fifth is never use a sharp tool without an older person's help. Can you see the tool that they're using? Yeah, it looks like a sharp kitchen knife and it looks like they're cutting up a cucumber. Knives can be great tools, but if we're not careful with them, you can also get hurt from them. That's why there's this rule. Never use a sharp tool without an older person's help. The sixth one is never ride in a car without wearing a seat belt. In Oregon, it's state law that everyone that rides in a car wears a seat belt, and that's for safety. This next one, the seventh, is never touch a dog without asking the person in charge. So do you think about it? Think about it for a moment. Do you think that means your own dog? No. You know your own dog, and your own dog knows you. These, this is for dogs that you don't know. Say you're at the park, or you're walking in your neighborhood, and you see someone with a new puppy. It's always important, even if we think the dog looks safe and looks friendly, we need to always ask permission. We need to ask the person in charge. Too many times people have thought, oh, he looks friendly, and they go up and try to pet the dog and they get bit. You always want to ask permission. And the eighth and last one is never cross the street without checking all ways for traffic. So usually we look left, then right, and then left, okay? But you want to make sure that it's clear before you enter an intersection. You can't just step into a crosswalk and expect the drivers of vehicles to see you. You want to make sure you have eye contact with them, maybe even wave at them to let them know you appreciate them stopping, okay? It's really, really important that you're really careful around streets and crossings. Okay, so that was the first R, recognize. Now let's talk about the second R, report. Okay, tell an adult. Yeah, and I would add, tell an adult that you trust, okay, right away. Think about Kelso. You're facing a big problem. It's scary and it's dangerous, you need to get help right away. It's called reporting. It's not tattling, it's different, okay? And the third R is refuse, okay? Using words that mean no. And again, we want to say no, not in an angry or yelling voice, but in a voice that's strong and respectful and assertive, okay? A no that means, that says, I mean what I say. There's another rule that I want to go over, and it's the always ask first rule. 
And this is one where we always ask a parent or the person in charge first. So whoever's taking care of you, you have to ask them. And it's important for them to know if, if you are wanting to go to a friend's house or go to the store, that they know where you are. Okay, and this, so this is, this is a rule that we have that's called the always ask first rule. All right, so this is Dante, okay? And his friend Emilio is trying to get him to come into the boys' restroom with him. Emilio heard that a fifth grade boy, who they both know, is in one of the restroom stalls showing off a gun that he brought to school. Look at Dante's face. How do you think he's feeling? Emilio says that he wants to go look at the gun, and he says the boy will let them hold it and even pull the trigger. Hmm. Stop and think. Is it safe for Dante and Emilio to go look at the gun? What do you think? Dante recognizes right away that it's not safe to touch guns. He remembers the never-never rule is to never touch guns. It's the first never-never rule. But he has a hard time saying no to his friend Emilio. And Dante is actually pretty curious about the gun. He's never really seen one up close or in person. And to think that he might get to pull the trigger. Wow. Think about what Dante should do next. He knows about the never never rule. So he knows it's not okay. He knows it's not safe. But he's also curious. Hmm. Dante, we all know that Dante needs to refuse Emilio and then report, right? This, the two R's. He already recognized. So he needs to refuse and report that a fifth grade boy has a gun and is showing his kids in the restroom. So Dante decides to use his second step skill of being assertive and to refuse to break the never never rule. So he turned to Emilio and in a strong, respectful voice, he says, no, that's dangerous. The rule is never touch guns. Good job, Dante. Emilio says, though, Oh, come on. Wouldn't it be cool to pull the trigger? Dante shakes his head and says, You go ahead, but I'm not doing it. Emilio replies, Okay, but you better not tell. Think about what Dante should do next. Hmm. He's, set, he's stood his ground. He's actually following the rule and he was really clear about saying no and that it's dangerous. Emilio still wants to do it and he said, go ahead. And then Emilio says, well, you better not tell. Hmm. Is this a time where it's telling, tattletaling or is it reporting that needs to happen? Yeah, Dante needs to report, and that means telling an adult. There are many adults at school that you could report unsafe things to. So Dante decides to tell his teacher about the fifth grade boy who is showing off the gun. The teacher said, I'm really glad you told me. Guns are very dangerous and are not allowed at school. I will take care of this problem right away. So Dante did the right thing. Emilio might be upset that he told on him, but we have to weigh having to tell over the safety of everyone, and a gun is just not safe. So Dante did the exact thing, the right thing. Okay, so I've got some scenarios for you to think about, and I want you to ask yourself what you would do. First, 
Your friend wants to race him to the race you to the park on bikes, but you don't have a helmet. Hmm. What's the rule? He wants to race on bikes to the park, but you don't have a helmet. Yeah, the rule is never ride on wheels without wearing a helmet, right? Right. So what could you do in this situation? Well, you could say to your friend, "Hold on, let me go get my helmet if it's close by," right? Or you could say, "Ah, uh, I don't have my helmet, so I'm not supposed to ride my bike, but I'll race you by running instead of riding." Or, no, I don't feel like racing. Any of those solutions would work for that situation. Here's another one. What would you do? Your friend is showing you a lighter that he brought from home, and he wants you to hold it and start some newspapers on fire. Hmm, what's the rule here? Yeah, we never play with fire. So you would have to refuse and say, no, it's not safe, and then report right away. Because fire can be very dangerous, and even little fires turn into big fires quickly. They get out of control. It's just not safe. All right. I have a song here for you to listen to, and it's about the eight never-nevers. And it's a fun song, and I think if you're like me, it will probably get stuck in your brain, and you'll be humming it and singing it all day long. So, listen to this. There are eight never, never. these things you never do. Eight never, never. just the molder tried and true. There are eight never, never. these things you never do. Eight. Use the molder tried and true The first thing you do Now never skip this rule Always ask a grown-up first To make sure things are cool Your grown-ups will protect you And make sure things are good They're there for you to keep you safe Understood? One Never, never, uh-uh Touch a gun Two Never, never, no way Play with fire Three Never, never Go on wheels without a helmet Four Never dive right in Ask before you get wet These rules can keep you safe There are eight Never, never These things you never do Eight Never, never Use the molder tried and true There are eight Never, never These things you never do Eight Use the molder tried and true. All right, but what about sharp tools or petting dogs? Number five. Never, never. Use sharp tools alone. Number six. Never pet a dog. Without asking your grown-up. Seven. Check for traffic. Both ways before you cross the street. Eight. Never ride in cars. Unless you're buckled up. All nice and neat. There are eight. Never, never. These things you never do. Eight. Use the molder tried and true. There are eight. Never, never. These things you never do. Eight. Never, never. Use the molder tried and true. All right. Was I right about that song? Is it stuck in your head? Are you going to be whistling it or singing it throughout the day? Well, sorry for that. But thanks for joining for today's safety lesson. Okay, and I've attached a flip grid activity that I want you to do in, as well. And I will see you next time.